And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Well, uh, finally, finally, and you know we don't talk about politics on this show if we can avoid it. Finally, the Democratic primaries are over. And it took to the very last primary to figure out that Barack Obama has the most delegates and he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party to run for president this fall. It is a, uh, of course, a, a landmark situation. It's the first time an African American has. Uh, become the nominee of a major political party. There have been African American nominees for president uh, who uh, ran on third, fourth, fifth parties, but uh, this is the first time that a Republican or a Democrat has been uh, uh, African American. It's never happened before. And uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Hillary Clinton still has not conceded defeat. Uh, she's either delusional or she's trying to negotiate to become the vice presidential nominee. But whichever, let's go back to something I said months ago. Remember when every I said this to you on the air way back. This I don't think it predated you, Art. I think you were here. Uh, yeah, last time I talked about Obama. I mean, what what I said originally. Do you remember when when? Uh, Everybody in the media was saying that the uh, Republican nominee is going to be Rudy Giuliani and the Democratic nominee is going to be Hillary Clinton. And I said to you on the air and I said to everybody who would listen that the only reason that they're saying that is because the news media are located in the Northeast, specifically New York and Washington, D.C., and so, of course, these idiots once again miscalculated once again. If you are from New York, you are not going to be the presidential nominee. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. End of story. It's not going to happen. The only people who love New York are people who live in New York. The people outside of New York hate New York. And when it comes right down to it, we're not voting for anybody from New York. Not a Republican, not a Democrat, not anybody. If you're from New York, you're not going to be the nominee. You're not. And I was saying this back when the oh all the pundits, all the experts were swearing it was going to be Giuliani against Clinton. It's going to be, there's no doubt about it, it's Giuliani against, all the polls are saying it, Giuliani against Clinton. It's going to be Rudy Giuliani because of his 9-11, he was America's mayor. And Hillary Clinton, she's the United States senator from the state of New York, and of course, the whole country has got to respect the fact that she's a senator from here. Nobody gave a rat's ass. Nobody cared. Once again, the people who ran for president from New York, they got wiped. <laughs> Once again. Who was the last guy from New York to uh, run for president? Who was the last nominee from New York? I think it was Adlai Stevenson in like 1952. That's right. Ran against uh, General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yes, I read books. <laughs> Sorry, every once in a while it leaks out. <laughs> yes, Adlai Stevenson. That's how far back it goes. And uh, before that, uh, Governor Thomas Dewey of New York State ran against Harry Truman in 1948. 
And uh, and by the way, they lost. <laughs> America hates New York, and here's your proof again. And not only that, this whole thing proves two things. One thing is that Americans hate New York, okay? You can't escape it if you're from New York. You can't. That you people are delusional, and you think that New York is the center of everything. By the way, where are the NBA finals being played? Oh, that's right, not New York. Okay. But... Um, America hates New York, and, and yet, because the news media are based in New York, they're always pushing these New York people on us and trying to tell us that, uh, oh, yes, yes, Rudy Giuliani's a lock. He's a lock to be the Republican nominee. He's a lock. He's a, who is this, Mike Huckabee? Who is this, uh, uh, John McCain? Yeah, right, he'll get a few, but Rudy Giuliani, he's America's mayor. America's mayor. There he was in the rubble of world, the World Trade Center. He, of course he's going to be the nominee. Of course. You know, and he got people stopped spinning on the subway. Of course, every, the whole country is impressed with Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. Where is he now? <laughs> Gone. And, of course, Hillary Clinton. Let me just say this about Hillary Clinton. Not only is she a senator from New York, which did not help her at all, except in winning New York and... Puerto Rico, where half of Puerto Rico at one time or another has lived in New York and then moved back to Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico and when I was in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I went out to eat. I talked to people who had a heavier New York accent than anybody in my family. You'd think they'd all speak Spanish, but no, they sound like they were from the Bronx, and many of them were. So, um, you know, Hillary Clinton being from New York, I certainly did not help her overall. And helping a lot of these states where Obama just rolled over like Iowa on up. <laughs> it's amazing. But uh, not only that, and let's just say this, okay? Let's be honest here. <laughs> I've said this before, and, and now I'm going to remind you by saying it again. By the way, let me just say before I say this, so nobody gets the idea that I am anything but a, celeb a celebrant of diversity. Okay, I am voting for Barack Obama. I'm not, I'm not, it's no secret. I'm voting for him. Finally, an intelligent guy running for president. I don't care what party he's with. Somebody with a brain is running for office. I'm voting for him. that. And I wouldn't vote for John McCain in a million billion years based on personal experience I have with John McCain. Would never vote for him. So it's a lock. I will vote for Barack Obama. I I, I just I I think he's a very exciting candidate. Hopefully, he can win. Okay. Now, having said that, understand that I'm coming from the right place when I say this. That America so doesn't want a woman to be president. That they're going to nominate a black man to be the Democratic nominee. Because that's never happened before. But if the choice was a woman or a black guy, we're taking the black guy. Because he's a guy. We never took a black guy before. But we're taking this black guy. Because he's not Hillary Clinton. He's not a woman. Not from New York. And everything going for him. <laughs> I mean, think about it. You know, the only time we ever had black candidates in the past was that Shirley Chisholm in 1976 who... Uh, I don't even know. Did she ever actually become a finalist for president? She was like the first uh, black woman to run for president, first black person to run for president, whatever, in the modern era. And then, uh, you know, of course, the the various uh, just delusional uh, attempts by uh, Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton to become president, which will never happen. Never, ever, 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 ever. Never, ever. All right. But the uh, fact is that uh, African Americans have never really been seriously considered as a nominee. But what Hillary Clinton did <laughs> is she made it possible for a black man to become the nominee. Because if it comes down to a woman or a black man, we're taking the black man. We don't want somebody who sounds like our ex-wife. Sounds like our nagging wives <laughs> as the president. We don't. That voice of Hillary Clinton could could uh, really, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Just just absolutely insufferable. And watching her standing there 
out of out of sync, out of rhythm, uncomfortably standing on stage, pumping her fist to uh, you know various songs of the seventies and eighties. <laughs> if I had to look at that, if America had to look at that, there's no way we were voting for that. There was no way. So now we've got Barack Obama uh, running against uh, John McCain. That's what we've got. So uh, the New Yorkers, <laughs> you notice they will not be calling in today. I'll tell you right now. They're hiding under the desk. Because just, I, I would just take you back, having nothing to do with politics, I will take you back to the year 2000 when the New York Mets played the New York Yankees in the World Series. And I had the misfortune of being in New York right before game one of the World Series in the year 2000. And uh, somebody knew I was from Los Angeles. And he came up to me, and in all seriousness, here's what he said. I'm not making this up, and I'm not really exaggerating when I do this. I'm not exaggerating his voice or accent very much. Here's what the guy says to me. So, you're from L.A., huh? Uh, I bet everybody in L.A. is very excited. The Mets and the Yankees, the, the whole country's been waiting for this. Lowest rated World Series of all time. Lowest rated World Series of all time. These people are delusional. And just like in 1984, people in New York thought Mario Cuomo was going to be the Democratic nominee. Didn't happen against uh, Ronald Reagan. Didn't happen. Uh, these morons once again thought that uh, the two New Yorkers are going to be running against each other and the whole country was waiting for that. And the whole country uh, <laughs> flipped New York a collective bird. I think it's great. But on top of that, on top of that, <laughs> Americans so don't want a woman to be president they would vote for a black guy. That's how much they didn't want Hillary Clinton to be the president. <laughs> if Barack Obama ran against another guy, like if the two finalists were guys, I think he'd had a lot harder time winning. Even though I think he's the best candidate and the most intelligent person out there and the most articulate person who has run, but making that Mike Huckabee look about as dumb as George Bush. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The, the 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 best boost he got was was being finally up against Hillary Clinton and Hillary Clinton alone. <laughs> so Americans, just to review, don't want anybody from New York. Don't want a woman. It's true, right? Tom like one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom 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 Oh yeah, it's the Tom like it show. At 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. <laughs> All right, Barack Obama's the nominee. We don't talk politics on the show very often, but I just love it. It's fascinating. Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Yeah, I listen to your show all the time, and usually I, I agree with a lot of the stuff you say, but I always hear you dogging on New York, and I think you're, you are you come off as someone that's jealous of New Do York. Do you disagree with what I just said? I disagree with a lot of what you just uh, Tell said. me specifically what you disagree with. I'm listening. I disagree with the, the whole Hillary thing, for starters. Really? How about how nobody wants a president from New York? Yeah, well, name the last nominee from New York. Well, I can name the last nominee from New York, but I can tell you that Hillary... Well, because there hasn't been one. You know why you can't name the last nominee from New York? Because there hasn't been one in your lifetime. But did Hillary not win the popular vote? Uh, no. Hillary won the popular vote. No, she didn't because the Michigan and Florida primaries uh, were did not count. Well, they ended up splitting the Michigan. No, they split the delegates, but the popular vote was not counted. And by the way, we don't count the popular vote uh, in uh, uh, primaries anyway. Oh, well, I know we don't count the popular vote. But the, those two elections. elections don't count. But you're saying nobody wanted a Barack Obama so did not was not even on the ballot in one of those. So how how can you even how can you even use that as an example? But he chose not to be on the ballot. 
Look, we do not uh, choose our nominees by popular vote. They're chosen by number of delegates. And Barack Obama had the most number of delegates. End of story. And the argument I would make is that doesn't mean that nobody in America wanted a president. I didn't from say New York. nobody in America wants somebody from New York. I said people so didn't want somebody from New York, they elected a black guy. But if more people voted for Hillary, if a white guy, I'll tell you what, if a white guy were running against Hillary, it would have been even worse. Can I can I just tell you one more thing, too, Tom? Hopefully, it's relevant to what we're talking about. Well, I heard you say a lot of uh, sport analogies. You talked about uh, basketball, and you were talking about the World Series. Right. I think, think you were talking about it being the lowest rated, or yeah, wait, right? the two thousand World Series was the lowest rated in history. I think you were trying to say that was because they were from New York. I think. Well, that's a fact. Thing. Yeah, you can you can sit here and uh, quibble with me, but it's a fact. And then, do you remember what the highest rated Super Bowl in history was? That, again, it has nothing to do with anything. The fact is the two New York teams have never played each other in a Super Bowl. So I, so you're comparing apples and oranges. The I fact think is... So. I, I think... Oh, yes. Super Bowl in history and... Again, again, I, the people in New York stupidly and in delusion believed that the whole country was waiting to see the New York Mets play the New York Yankees in the World Series. And they were dead wrong. But they all showed up to see the Giants. They showed up to see the Giants play a team. They show, if the Giants played the Jets, the whole country would not have been watching. Well, probably not, but that's not That's my point. You're, you're comparing apples and oranges. I'm saying the people in New York think that the whole world cares about the Subway Series and the Mets and the Yankees, and, and we don't. But you also said, where is the NBA Finals being played this yeah, year? Yeah, like, where are they being played? New York? Like it was bragging rights or something. Are they playing in New York? No, they're not playing in New York. When's the last time they played in New York? Oh, God. God only knows. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know why God only knows? Because you weren't born yet. <laughs> um, you know, Tom, like I said, I usually agree with you on a lot of things. I think when it comes to New York, you have some kind of hatred or jealousy. No, I know. I, what I get tired of, what I get tired of is the attitude. I mean, by the way, I know I'm not alone in believing this. Is the attitude of people from New York that it's the center of everything. And it's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it was though. I, I I, we're not talking that. about you. I'm talking about New Yorkers in general. I think a lot of the times when you bring up New York, you you dog on New York for no logical reason. I dog on New York because New Yorkers come to Los Angeles and dog on Los Angeles. And Los Angeles people go to New York and, and dog on New York. No, actually, actually, Los Angeles people couldn't care less about New York. I dog on New York, but the average person from L.A. doesn't dog on New York, doesn't dog on San Francisco, even though San Francisco dogs on L.A. Uh, L.A. people don't care. They don't care about that stuff. I mean, that your own brother, I, I believe, lives in New York. I think I he does. He does. And he has some of that attitude. No doubt about it. And I remember when the Giants won the the Super Bowl. I remember listening to you and you saying you couldn't believe all those radio personalities. No, I couldn't. We're, we're jumping up and down, saying, "Look, we did it! Look, we did it!" They didn't but, do anything. That first of all, but, the, the team doesn't even the team doesn't even play in New York. But for the last week, all the, the last team week does not all even play. Well, no, 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 no. Hey, the, the 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 team you're talking about does not play in New York. It doesn't. New York State has one team. It's called the Buffalo Bills. Well, they they used to play in New York, and their stadium. Yeah, twenty five years ago. But their stadium is technically it's not in New York. But it's, it's not it's it's not technic no no it's it's in New Jersey. Yeah, technically it's not. Not in New technically, York, it's not technical. There's nothing technical about it. If you drive over the, uh, the 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 George Washington Bridge, or you go through the Lincoln or the Holland Tunnel to get to to see a, a Giants game, you have to pay a toll because you've changed states. You're in another state. But you don't think you're a hypocrite? Nope. Dogging on those same I'm not. personalities. I'm not. doing the same thing with the Lakers. Uh, no, actually, I'm not. I never said that I accomplished anything with the Lakers. I'm very excited to watch the NBA Finals, but I had nothing to do with it. But you're very excited to watch the NBA Finals. I'm excited Finals. because I, the Lakers are my team. There's no doubt about it. And if they want, and I, what they I really love really is that young. morons like you and Spike Lee and others uh, somehow think the New York Knickerbockers have some relevance somewhere. Well, no, I, I think they suck. To be honest with you, Tom, yeah. I call it like I see it. Do you want? Do you want to know who played for the New York Knickerbockers the last time they won a championship? Tell me, Phil Jackson. See, that was a long time ago. That's right. That's how long it is. 
And I want to know you that fact with you. That, that's good. By the way, the New York Yankees, what place are they in now? I'm not a big baseball fan. I, I see. You. So you you don't know that the Yankees are in last place? You don't, you're don't. you not aware of that? No, I don't even like the Yankees, to be uh, honest with I you. I see. Okay. And the Mets, where are they? Actually, I'm a Dodger fan. But like I said, uh, I don't really follow, really follow the team. You're a I'm Dodger not, fan. You're a Dodger fan. fan until the Yankees or the Mets get into the World Series. Suddenly you change allegiances, probably. Like I said, I'm not a full-blown baseball fan, but uh, if, I see. you know, if I pick the team, I pick the Dodgers. And that's uh, not because I see. What if the what if, what if the uh, Yankees were playing the Dodgers in the World Series? I never cared for the Yankees. What about I'm, what if the Mets honestly, played the Dodgers in the National League Championship Series? Then I'd go for the Dodgers. Really? I like the Dodgers. I would support LA there. Yeah. Dodgers stink this season too. Yeah. Well, you know, that doesn't the, mean I wouldn't say on the national radio. And where's where's like their them. manager from? The Dodgers? Yeah. Like I said, Tom, I don't really follow baseball. You want to get into football with me? I can. I can. Talk right, so you don't know where you, you don't know where Joe Torrey's from? Okay. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, uh, I listen to Sean Hannity, and uh, he's always, you know, very bad mouthing Barack Obama. I want to know what's his, because uh, I know you say you're, you're kind of good friends with him. Or friends uh, with him. Oh, no. I, I, well, we haven't talked about Barack Obama, Sean Hannity, and I, but I will tell you, I just know from listening to his show and knowing Sean as long as I have. Uh, I, I know he and his ilk are scared to death of Barack Obama. There's no doubt about it. Uh, is it because he's black or just because of what he stands for? No, what? no, because he's the Democrat who can win. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, what is his policies? What, no, what it's Sean Hannity, and, I, you know, I, I love Sean like a brother. I think he's just wonderful personally, and I just want to say that. But But, but Sean Hannity is one of these people who supports the Republican Party regardless. I mean, the guy still says that George Bush was one of the greatest presidents in the history of the United States. Uh, well, I don't hear him saying that, but I, he goes on about Ronald Reagan. He's always... But he's also said that about George Bush. I haven't, I haven't heard that, but... I uh, have. <laughs> and, uh... And, uh... Some of the, some of the I mean, Sean, Sean, is, Sean, in my mind, is a great broadcaster, successful, deserves the success he has. And on top of that, though, he's, uh, let's face it, he's nothing but a puppet of the Republican Party. That's what he is. Yeah. A puppet. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I still love him to death. What's that? I still love him to death personally. I, do. I mean, he's a nicer guy you'd never meet. Well, I'm glad that you're going to vote for Obama. I think he's got a really good chance. I voted really for like Obama, him. and I know Sean Hannity is losing sleep over it. I can tell you right now. <laughs> and one more thing. Last year, I went to uh, New York for my anniversary, and uh, the place stinks. People are rude. Right. There's, tra there's trash on the streets. There's no alleys or anything, you know. So I went there thinking it was going to be great, and you know what? I came back thinking I'm not going back there again. Yeah, well, I I just go to visit family. I really couldn't care less about being in New York, and uh, and certainly I know America does not want a New Yorker running for president. <laughs> All right, we've proven it again. For God's sake, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Sandra, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Listen, I was I was just driving now, and I live in California now, but I'm Puerto Rican, and let me tell you, you shouldn't be dissing New York because... Well, I thought you were Puerto you know, Rican. That's what I said, I'm Puerto Rican. Well, you, well, what do you care about whether I diss New York? You're Puerto Rican. I'm New Yorkina, man. I am, because let me tell you... Which are you? Are you from New York, New York or Puerto okay. Rico? What? Are you from New York or Puerto Rico? I'm from both. No, you you can't I be from both. Puerto you're from Rico, one I or the other. Which is it? But New York is place to party. Let me tell you, we know how to rock and roll in New York. Well, and so I live in California. Let me tell you, Tom, you don't hang out with your family. Next time you come to New York, you hang out with my cousins, and they will, and they're gorgeous. I'm gorgeous. They're gorgeous. They will show you the real New York. I grew up in New York. I I know New York as well as anybody. I left you know, there. You know, you know East Harlem, you know Spanish Harlem. You know. Yeah, ac actually, actually, I do. Then you must know that that is really where New York, where New York's heart is. I, I don't New care York's where heart. New York's heart is. I don't live in New York. 
But if we had a Puerto Rican running for president, I guarantee you that he would be from New York and people would vote for him. Oh, I, I doubt that. But Puerto Ricans, oh yes, Tom, because Puerto Ricans represent all races. We don't it doesn't race matter. If they're from New York, they're not going to win. But listen, I'm from New York. I love California. I love New York. I love you. I don't have no heat for nobody. Great. I don't look down on California. And I'm from New York. Well, that's because you're here. If you look down on California, you should go back. No, man. I am, I'm American. I can go where I want to go. No, you can go where you want to go, but why you would you want to stay in a place you look down on? You hang out with the wrong people, Tom. I love you, but you need next time you come to my cousins, and we'll take you out, and we'll show you a good time. Well, I'm in New York. I need a different kind of a good time. You know the kind of good time I need? Well, we can give you that, too. Is I that so? Single, I got single cousins. Is that so? Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like it. It's the Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood. At one 800 800 tom this Friday, it's back. Flash Friday, in two days, this Friday, June 6th, all summer long. The return of Flash Friday, it's Flash Friday 2008, it begins this Friday. As we cruise into summer, and I told you, I am here every day this summer, I'm here all summer long. So, uh... Get ready. Flash Friday coming up this Friday, beginning at 3 Pacific time right here on the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Barack Obama now officially uh, has the most delegates. And when he goes to the convention this summer, he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party to run for president against John McCain. That's the deal. (laughs) one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, how are you doing? Doing great. That's what I like to hear. I'm not coming into this with any opinion about any candidate, but I'm curious, do you think that it is a possibility that you may be dismissing better qualities about Obama versus Hillary? Uh, no, I, here's the thing, because uh, I have preferred Obama to Hillary to begin with, and I certainly uh, see all the good qualities of Barack Obama. Uh, but I do believe that, um, although it's not as bad as it used to be, uh, that the proof is in the pudding. Over the years, we've never had a black nominee. Correct. Uh, no matter how smart, no matter how uh, uh, reasonable, no matter uh, how good they might have been, uh, we just never got around to nominating anybody who was black. Uh, the reason we did it this time is because the alternative was a shrill, shrieking shrew. Oh, America has spoken. But, I mean, how would you feel about maybe a more qualified, you know, female running candidate? A write-in candidate? No write-in candidate. No write-in candidate has ever won. Ever. 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 Huh. Can you name one? Can't name one. Because there hasn't been one. That makes sense. I mean, who? George Washington? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't born yet. Franklin, De- well, come on, you read a book. You, yeah. you, they made you study history at one time, right? Certainly did. Abraham Lincoln? Huh. It's been a while. I, I, do you, can, you can't name one writing candidate, and the reason is because there's never been one. Who's one? Huh. You sound surprised. Oh, I'm curious, did- mostly, how... You know, a more qualified female would do against would do against someone like Barack. You wonder how they would do. Yeah. Well, put it this way: I I don't think Americans want a woman president. I don't. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with whether Hillary Clinton is uh, qualified. Uh-huh. I mean, I think the qualifications of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, as far as. You know, knowing the zip code of Washington, D.C., and uh, knowing where the White House is, I think they're about equal. Right. Hillary Clinton had sex with the president for eight years, and she thinks that's experience. I wasn't there to see it, though. Well, that's exactly right. Which I'm not complaining about. There were sometimes the president was having sex, and Hillary wasn't there either. <laughs> I believe that. As you know. Well. So, um, you know, my opinion is that... Uh, uh, no, Americans don't want a New Yorker, and they don't want a woman, and so they voted a black guy. 
uh, to be the Democratic nominee, which is great because if it ever had to happen, I think uh, Barack Obama is one of the brightest guys in 45 years to run for president. I agree. Keep doing what you're doing. We love it. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. All right. I just had a question. Um, what do you think would happen, even though uh, Barack Obama, I guess, would be our first black president, if he uh, got assassinated? What do I think would happen? Do you think riots would break out in L.A. again like they did in the 90s? Why would you say such a thing? Oh, you know, well, there's, honestly, a, there's no com- There is no comparison. Really? Really? I mean, when riots, br- by the way, I was right here in Los Angeles doing a radio show at that time during the riots. I had to drive to work through gunfire and flames on the way to my uh, studio in Koreatown at that time. Mm-hmm. And and the fact is, the rioting, though I'm not a big fan of rioting, uh, the rioting was a result of, we saw a video of these cops beating the crap out of a black guy. You saw the video. Mm-hmm. And then a jury said, yeah, they're not guilty. That That is hardly the same thing. Okay, but wouldn't you say that the country would probably uh, go into a bit of chaos for the first black president to be assassinated? Well, I don't know. Do you remember uh, the uh, times that we had? Uh, I mean, I was seven years old when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, there was chaos at that time. There was not rioting, but there was chaos and people were flipping out. Uh huh. I remember that. Yeah, I wasn't there. I, I, wasn't quite I remember when, now when Martin Luther King was assassinated, there were riots. That's true, but that was a time when uh, America had an awful lot of rioting and uh, social disorder going on, which included the uh, uh, demonstrations at the 1968 Democratic Convention in Chicago. Uh-huh. So, who's to say? Why, I would not automatically assume that people would riot if Barack Obama was assassinated. Yeah. Okay, I was just. Uh, I was and just so you would not vote for him just in case that would be a, a risk. Well, no, actually, I didn't vote for either. So I mean, I have no. Um, well, yeah, but in November, are you going to vote for somebody? No, I didn't vote for anyone in November. That's a that's a month that hasn't happened yet this year. Okay, it's in the future. Yeah, I didn't hear you there. I, I, I'll say it again. You're going to vote for someone, aren't you? No. Nope. Why not? I don't know. I just, uh, I really, I actually have never voted before. So what? So, yeah, so I just really have no intention to. I'd rather Why? go work. You, you, don't, you don't plan to, at least, you don't have to be an expert, but you, you wouldn't vote? You don't have a preference? No, not really. So you're I mean, happy with the war in Iraq and you're happy with the lousy economy? Well, I mean, that's that's all due to our uh, great president that we have right now, so I guess... And you have a guy running for president against Barack Obama who says he's going to continue the policies of George Bush. He's saying it. Ugh. So don't you think it would be worth your while to go out there and express an opinion? Yeah, but I just don't know if I really would. You know, I mean, if it... How hard is it? How hard? I mean, well, it's not hard. I mean, I have an absentee ballot sent to the House. All you right, know, so just, why don't uh, you do? why don't you do it? I don't know. Just never really uh, got around to doing it when I turned and, 18. And yeah, well, that's why, you had, that's why you have what you have now. Yeah. Because people well, like I'm, you have the attitude you have. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with what I have right now. Yeah, at least you like the war in Iraq. You're happy about that. You're happy about the recession. You're happy about oil prices. That has no effect You're on You're happy me. about the declining dollar. You're happy about the interest rates where they've been. You're happy about it. It's all going well. Yep. Going perfect for me. Great. One eight hundred five eight hundred. You're a moron. What can I say? One eight hundred five eight hundred. Why don't I talk about politics? That's why. And I won't be doing it again anytime soon. I'll tell you right now because that's what you get. That's that's the voice of the people right there. I mean, that Barack Obama becoming the nominee of the Democratic Party. It's historic. You can't not mention it. But if you think I'm going to spend every day talking about politics when when that's the reaction of people, forget it. Not doing it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Javier. Are you Javier or Xavier? I always have to ask. Uh, it's Xavier, Tom. Xavier. Okay. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, this is actually the first time I listened to you, and I actually caught you on uh, when you're talking about New Yorkers. And I have to say you hit the nail on the head. 
Um, and a lot of New Yorkers get offended, but what, I live in L.A., and looking at New York from L.A. and in general, and it's been amplified since 9-11, and I hate to say that, but it's the truth. They play the martyr. They play like they are the center of the world, like the whole world revolves around New York. And maybe that was true in the 1800s, but that's not the case now. And I just feel that New Yorkers really got to get off their high horse and say, look, we're not the center of the universe. We're part of this bigger country, and there are cities just like us, and we're not that great. Well, they're never going to get off their high horse. It's all based on this delusion. By the way, that delusion is also reflected in that Sex in the City movie and, and the TV <laughs> show. It's also reflected in... Just, just, just remember this. New York is a place where people think that women who look like the women on Sex in the City are attractive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree 100%. That's the and, kind of city it is. You know, and it, it, it's even reflected in their candidates from New York, like you mentioned, especially, especially Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, coming into yesterday, you know, her speech, it was the non-concession concession speech. This is a city where people think Tina Fey is hot. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. But You think she's hot? She's mildly attractive. Mildly attractive? No, mildly attractive, yes. Was that a hockey injury she had, by the way? What's that scar? I, <laughs> uh, you got me there. You like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you like women who look like Popeye too. What do you like? Uh, you know, I like the little yuck 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 going on too. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, though, I mean, <clears throat> you know, it just—it's really disgusting to see people just so full of themselves, like New Yorkers. And I'm probably getting a lot of stuff from, you know, friends that I have in New York, but it's the truth, you know. They just think they're so great, and it just, it irks me, and I'm glad someone finally said it, and I just wanted to say thanks for saying it. I'm uh, proud to have said it, and I'm a proud Angelino and a proud Californian, and I have to tell you that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Reggie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, good evening. How are you today? I'm doing great. Hey, you know what? I know exactly where I was when you made that comment about the country electing a black man before a woman. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> and, and you know what? And, and not only that, the, the saddest of sad part is because when you listen to both of the candidates last night, you know, he was gracious. He even congratulated her on the on the ground that she had broken as far as being a woman candidate goes and, and all that good stuff. Not once, even to as I'm speaking to you, has she even reached out to him and said, congratulations, you know, you're the Democratic nominee. I mean, typical woman. I mean, she's just like, you know, I'm going to take my dollies and go home now. Last night, she was like, I want everyone to go to HillaryClinton.com and tell me what you think I should do. Should I fight on? Should I? Oh, shut up. You know what I did? I went to Hillary, HillaryClinton.com and I wrote her a nice little letter. Basically telling her, you know what, it's not about you anymore. It never was about you anyway in the first place, you know. And I was like, you, you basically, you're just being selfish. You just want to find yourself, find a way back into that White House and just keep this country in the turmoil that it's already in. It, it's ridiculous. There's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, <laughs> she was, uh, believe me, it seemed to me like she was going to go all the way to the convention and keep up with this nonsense. I won the popular vote. I have a better chance to beat John McCain. The polls all say she doesn't have a better chance of beating John McCain. All the superdelegates are running to Barack Obama. She's delusional. Well, what gets me is when she says last night, well, I'm not making a decision. Whatever the decision is that's for you to make, it looks like it's pretty much me from where I'm sitting. You are exactly right, Reggie. Great point. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. More to come. Stay right there. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station.